around here, family. Yeah, I know I told y'all we're gonna be starting the day off with the cold showers. I'm keeping my word. So, once again, great money. Thanks for joining me. And let's get started. Great Imani, y'all. Yo, yeah. it's Imani. See it right there? <laughs> Point up. You see it, Sash? Okay, cool. Right um, there. Yeah. Okay. We are going to toast the day. Of course, you know we got to start with our water, me and Sash. Yeah. We're going to start with some water. Hold that, Sash. Anyway, we got some water. We're going to put it in the cup. And I go first because I get right. the best. Now you, Daddy. Water start, jump start the bar, uh, jump start the day. Oh. Hmm. A bowl, Jackie. Nope, we gotta get some more water. You drink it all? Yeah, I'm trying to do 16 ounces. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it ain't gonna be quite 16 ounces because she drinking some, right? Let's start that day off every day with that <laughs> water, right? I'm drinking that water. Daddy, why are you like it strong? Hmm. Last one. Here, let me put some more in there. Just a little bit for our kid. Oh yeah. Kids need water too. A lot of us suffer from dehydration. We want to make sure we get that water in yeah. so we start off the day, right? Then Daddy, say stuff for me. Say stuff for me. Uh -huh. Cheers! Go to go to the site, giamijourney.com. Within the next couple of days, I'm going to have the article and we up. Got a I'm going to call here. it, right, I'm calling it. The uh, shot of ambrosia and a cold shower. Mm -hmm. The effects. All right, now so we're gonna we still we still trying to finish off the beat. Hold that, Sasha. All right. We're gonna do our toast. Hold it tight because you don't want it to fall and break. Daddy, I told you got hold too it, soft. Hold it, hold it. I told you got strong muscles. Hold that while I put the top back on, please. Hold it. Don't let it fall. No, 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 no. Hold that. Hold that. Hold it. Thank you. It's a, that's a big one. You drink it first. Alright. <laughs> then me go last, okay? No uh, one is funny. It's not funny, anyone. It's not uh, funny. Shh. First, we're going to toast the Creator. The energy is all around us. We want to call that energy into our lives. We toast it and we say Ashe. Ashe. Right. Then we're going to move to our ancestors, our personal ancestors. Our ancestors. Our grandparents, our great grandparents. Our grand we, My dad, the grandpa just died. And yeah, we're going to toast all of our ancestors, friends, yeah. and family. We toast them. 
All right, you then, call your own names. You and my dad, and you know, Grandpa, and is we're gonna toast my uh, Grandpa, too. We're going to toast uh, the present moment, which is Imani. We're going to have a great Imani. We toast that. Grandpa, we say our shay. Peace. Uh, and then last but not least, we toast our children, our children's children, on to infinity because we toast them now so that they can toast us later. Uh, you want to have a sip? No, you first. All right, I'm going to drink it all. No! Well, drink some. Ah. Just that beef. Fresh and meat. Mm-hmm. Fresh and meat. Save some for me. So... Today we're going to have a discussion about money. My wife beat me up and started cleaning up everything. So it won't be a clean up segment. But we're going to have our workout segment. We still got to um, experiment with the isometrics. We experiment with the isometrics. My mom. We still got to oil that. We're going to oil that. My mom my daddy up for no reason. We're going to. We're going to do our oil letting. we still experimenting with that. We're going to do our workout, and then we're going to have our conversation. All right? Um, those that's joining us through Spreaker, because they want to download the podcast. <clears throat> so, um, we want to welcome you. Also, remember, make sure you do your daily toast, the libation. It just don't have to be poured on the ground. It could be poured into you. Right? And also, allow your children to join in. Look at her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so, oh, I didn't introduce my, my co-host today. This is Miss Sasha Mosh. Hi. Say hi, Sasha. Hi. And say, is today, is, say today is money? Today is money. Okay. Money is up there. Okay, and that's exactly where it's going to be. All right. Time for the oil lady. Daddy. Do the oil that, and this will happen when I film. When I film late. Can I pour it in your mouth? Let me pour it. Let me bend it out. Some oil. He's bit it in her mouth so he can swallow it. That was for him, and that was down for me. You are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. This is a Heart of a Symbol production. Where we strive to blow up your old paradigms.
Hello everybody, this is Ishmael and I'm here to tell you that I'm a big fan of Giamme Journey. That Adam and Eve myth interpreted as it was as it was later on in history led to profound conceptions of the woman as inferior and sometimes in some civilizations as essentially evil. So she, so she's supposed to be the great seductress, the weaker kind, etc. This was not the case in the African mythology. So that you already had a divine myth which gave a basis. It was a sort of bedrock for a reality that would give the woman greater freedom and power. It is not an accident, therefore, that many of the goddesses of the Europeans were black. They could have chosen their own women, they chose some of their own women, but the most important goddesses were black. Not just for the African now, in the civilization of the Greeks. The Greek was so profoundly affected by the Africans, that the goddess of chastity was a black woman, Artemis. The goddess of wisdom was a black woman, Minerva. The goddess of beauty was a black woman, Diana. And many of their great mythological figures which were critical to the vision of history, the history of the Greeks in the Odyssey, the woman who draws, who has the power to draw Odysseus and all his crew into her is Circe, who's represented as a black woman with African features on the Greek vases. The woman who helps Jason win the Golden Fleece is a black woman, Medea. The woman who marries Perseus, the Greek hero, is a black woman, Andromeda. If you see them represented in Hollywood, they're all white. But if you go back to the original vases, the original art of the Greeks, you will find that the only women they could find to represent the finest attributes in the feminine world were black women. Actual black women. They were literally living black women in Ethiopia who were made into legendary goddesses in Greece. That first... Call this board meeting to order. All right, let's get it, y'all. Let's get it. All right. So I got plenty of stuff to iron. Of course, you know it's Imani. So, all right, let's kick it. Um, so I'm gonna be putting iron down on a lot of stuff. So, um, of course, y'all won't be here to be here for the whole time. But hey, I'm just take it up, take up a few moments of your time you don't mind um, and talk about Iman now it is often said that faith without work is dead and man that's that's it, I don't know if there was ever a more sure statement made right because when we talk about this whole money piece we got to start putting uh, the things we have to start putting this energy, this 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 faith, this belief, this energy to work, and not just sitting around waiting for uh, things to manifest. Things don't manifest; we make them manifest. Things don't just happen; we make them happen. Things aren't just created; we create them, right? And our faith is not in the thing that we want to happen. Our faith has to start with us, right? We have to have the knowledge. We have to have the, the, the fortitude. We got to have the self-determination, the purpose, right? And when we got all that stuff, we can have the proper faith in ourselves to make things happen. You got to excuse me. I got to scoot this over just a little bit because my, pep, my pipes are sweaty and it's hitting the clothes that I'm trying to iron. I don't want that. All right, so we talk about faith, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like a lot of people get caught in the trick of faith, right? Where it's just things are supposed to happen and it's supposed to be that way and I'm supposed to just accept it in that way. I just posted up a video from the Wolfpack from um, 
uh, Young Turks. Very good, very good YouTube channel for those um, looking for uh, news. Not propaganda, but news. I mean, everybody does propaganda, um, but this, they give you a perspective that um, in, in, most, in most cases I've agreed with. I don't think I've seen anything pop up on it that I didn't necessarily agree with. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't. I can't find nobody I 100% agree with, and if I do, that's a problem right there. All right, um, because that might be just uh, an optical illusion of myself. All right, but they had a uh, an episode where they talked about the wealthy and American dream. See, American dream is a foundation piece in. In our society's mythos, right? And what the Young Turks did, they presented information that I've been talking to y'all about for a while, but a lot of people ain't hearing me, right? That uh, although production has increased, salaries haven't increased in for maybe 20 to 30 years. Money hasn't, uh, how much we're making, it doesn't keep up with the amount of production that is going on in America. Right, production has increased. More people, that they need less people to be productive with, so they don't, so they haven't increased the salaries. So what they was talking about on this was the whole American dream ethos, which a lot of people believe in. You know, if I work hard, you know what I'm saying, I'll be okay. I might not become wealthy, but things are going to happen for me to to take care. You know what I'm saying? I pay into my 401k or my retirement account. And everything is going to be all right, right? And then we got all this news about, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, you know, you got people saying, hey, we need to reduce taxes on corporations and, and we don't need to tax the rich. But Young Turks released a video where they're talking about how we have been deceived with this whole American dream and, and individuals working hard and achieving, right? We've been tricked. And what do I mean by that, right? Well, with a lot of these new laws that passed, starting back with our boy Reagan, what they have been able to do as far as the, 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 the 1%, let's say between the one and 10%, because all these individuals aren't on that 1% because you got to have a lot of money to be on that 1% and then to be on that that 1% of that 1% is, is, is incredible. But corporations have been able to pay, like for example, the average CEO makes about 300 times more than the average worker. Now let me say that again for you, right? That means for every $1 that a worker makes, a CEO makes 300. Right? But then they're talking about not taxing the rich. Right? We need to cut taxes on the rich. And we got individuals who are being overpaid. Now, I know a lot of y'all going to be mad. Brother Hatim Cal, how can you determine that? Well, first off, now, if it was an entrepreneurial business, I could dig that. Right? You built the company from the ground up. You get what you need. But we're talking about old corporations. Right? We're talking about corporations that, that you ain't really taking no risk. You're just a manager. And you're making 300 times more than the average person. So this means that the average person is putting in all these hours. All these hours. Right? And still not able to keep their head above water. But yet, their CEOs and their, their chiefs and all this stuff are making 300 times what they make. Right? For me, that is a dream killer. Right? Because now you got a president, the great pumpkin, talking about, hey, we're going to reduce taxes on corporations. We're going to reduce taxes on the rich. So that means that somebody who is getting over 300 times what his average worker is making is going to be paying less, less taxes. Which means that his, I mean, now, first off, 
his productivity is based on the people productivity that work for him. Not his necessarily his own productivity, right? You got to really think about what these CEOs are doing. What are they doing to make all this money? So they get all this leisure money. They're getting paid for leisure, right? And we got to be clear about that, right? So what does all this have to do with faith? The one thing that I always talk about that I like to do is I like to blow up your old paradigms, right? One of the old paradigms that we have is that if we work hard, we, we will succeed. That's not the truth in America anymore if it was ever the truth, right? That's not the truth. That's, that's something that, you, that you're embracing on blind faith. See, what blind faith often does is stops us from being able to actually grow, from being able, blind faith stops us from doing the most critical thing necessary to maintain your freedom. Ask questions. Ask questions, right? As a person of faith, as a person of a mind, I think that, I think that it's imperative that I announce to those of you that's taking a challenge, that's, that's taking this walk with me, right? You, you, you're starting to do your daily exercises. You, you're experimenting with the cold shower. You might not be able to jump in like I am right now, but this took months. Actually, it took years for me to be able to build up to a point where I could jump in and go straight to a cold, ice cold shower, right? And do nothing else. Took me a long time to get there. All that, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's my, my wife is upset because I, I have to spit outside because you don't want to spit that on the inside because it'll clog up your drains and stuff. But I'm spitting it out because when I go outside sometime, when I first started, once again on this, I would feel like I had to throw up. So I would have to do it right where I was. So I would make sure I was off the porch, but it's close enough to where you could see the stuff, right? And so, but the point is, the point I'm trying to make is this, man. Those of you that started this journey with me, part of your faith package, part of your money package, part of this day is not only evaluating what you believe in, but asking questions. Anything that you are involved with where you are not allowed to ask questions, you might need to start distancing, distancing yourself from because there's something going on that may be dangerous. Right now, we got in the news, Iran. Right now, we got in the news, Russia, right? We don't have in the news the very things that affect our lives. Iran and Russia don't necessarily affect our lives. Iran firing a missile don't mean one thing here or there for us, right? Of course, people are gonna be on here, oh, it matters because they're getting nuclear stuff and they're going boom. We got the technology. If, if Iran, in a short amount of time, could come up with a missile that could make it to the coast of America, then we have to question all these taxes that we're paying and all this money that we're putting into the military. We got planes that fly, fly faster than the speed of sound, right? We got accurate missiles. They can shoot a missile and hit me right now in my goddamn basement. You mean to tell me that a ragtag group in Iran could formulate a missile that would actually threaten the national defense of the United States of America. Give me a break. And if that's so, then we need to really reevaluate. We have to start asking questions. Why do they want to keep Iran in the news? Why do they want to keep Russia in the news? Why? Because they want to stop you from asking questions. They want to stop you from asking questions. And the questions that they want you to stop asking is, why isn't your life getting better? Why are you working longer and harder and not making any more money? That's what they want to get you, right? Your faith is being misguided, my friend. Your faith is being wrongly invested. Faith is an investment. Uh, let me say that again. Imani is an investment. Those things that you have faith in, you invest. Now, some of y'all just trust the market. You don't ask questions or nothing. You just put your money in, you expect to get it out. Really, that's how they do all of it, right? You know what I'm saying? But those of you that are investors, when you invest, right, you want to ask questions about the companies you're investing in. I'm saying start doing the same thing with your faith. 
Start doing the same thing with your belief. Those things, those people that you believe in, start asking critical questions. You don't even have to ask them, ask yourself. Because once you start asking yourself those questions, then you'll get bold enough to start asking them the questions. And once they, when, once you start seeing that they don't have necessarily the answers that you need, you can move on. You can divest, right? You can divest your faith, right? Because many of us got faith in the wrong institutions. Many of us got faith in, in the wrong people. Many of us got faith in the wrong things. And the bottom line is we didn't start where faith should start in the first place. Your faith, your faith, if you believe in the creator, start there. But right after the creator is you. I will even, for some of us, I even say, put your faith in you. Because the creator is in you. Start with you. Do you have faith in yourself? Do you have faith in your ability? This is why in the player's pyramid, we start with faith. Right? We don't start with it. We don't start with emoji. We start with faith. Because if a person does not have faith, in themselves, they will not be achieved any. Faith is the basis of the whole principal system. If you eliminate the faith, none of these principles will work. What good is having a purpose if you don't have faith in yourself and your ability to at least build towards um, completing the purpose? You got to start with faith, right? And a lot of y'all been investing your faith in the wrong direction. And because it's going in the wrong direction, so is your life. As your faith goes, so does your life. Yo, this is Brother High Tim saying, hey, this board meeting is adjourned. Ah, fool. All right, peace out, y'all. I couldn't get the steam up. Peace out. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there, the fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you, right there. And for those that want more information about Jeremy Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there.